I'm Mike, and I'll be the Game Master, or Big Shot, for this session of the Cowboy Bebop role-playing game that we're calling Cowboy Bebop. Join a group of down-on-their-luck bounty hunters as they try to apprehend their quarry and carry that weight. In future episodes, I'll let the players introduce themselves and their characters, but today, I don't want to spoil their characters, so I'll do the introductions. We have Christina, who you've heard on The House of Bob, and Josh, who you've probably heard before on Tales from the Glass Guarded World. House of Bob, and Tales of Bob, and finally, Schubert. You've heard on the House of Bob, Tales from the Glass Garden World, and on Schubert Reads. They're all playing bounty hunters, just trying to get by in a dangerous solar system. Hey, you're listening to Tales of Bob, and we're doing something new this week. We're playing the new Cowboy Bebop role-playing game from Mana Project Studio. We've already created characters, and you should be able to hear our character creation session soon on the House of Bob Patreon feed. You can join the House of Bob Patreon and support us at patreon.com slash the House of Bob. This game is really, really different. None of us are quite sure we understand how it works, but we're going to give it a try anyway. Let's start with the mechanics we have to get out of the way at the beginning of a session. So at the start of a session... I get to stash one point of risk for each of us. So that's four points. Risk is a resource I can spend later to make life more difficult for you, the bounty hunters. You each roll 1d6, and you start with that much rhythm, a resource that you can spend to help you succeed. So go ahead and everyone roll 1d6 and tell us what you get. Five for Bond. And Rockbot, what'd you get? Uh, Six. Nice. Wow. And Cactus Jack? Six. Six? Wow. Heck yeah. Bunch of high rollers. That'd be a rough session for me. All right. Starting out strong. You can't have more than six rhythm at the start of the session. I will say, Bon, if you wanted to bring that rhythm up to six, you could give me a risk and then you'd have six rhythm. But that would mean I have a risk that I get to use later. Yeah. Or you could just be happy with five. I think I'm happy with five for right now. Okay. Oh, five is pretty good. It's still pretty good. (laughs) Next, I have to define the session genre, and the session genre is jazz. In fact, the session title, which I'm also supposed to create at the beginning of the episode, the title of the episode, as it were, is All Jazzed Up, Baby. That means when you're attempting a test with a jazz approach, you get to add an extra D6 to your test. A test is when you're trying to do something that you might not succeed at doing. Something that has a benefit and a risk associated with it. Is everybody ready to get started? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I fully understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad someone does. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for guiding us through all this, Schubert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate all your, your work on the understanding the rules, Schubert. I mean, yeah. No, it, it was literally Mike made a... An explainer, and we all read it, and that's how we know how it works. <laughs> that's what we know. <laughs> <laughs> and even the explainer is imperfect, and I actually updated a couple things in it today because I realized that I left things out. Um, but we're just going to play it by ear here. All right, here we go. Cactus Jack leans back in the captain's chair of the Dancing Queen. The chair is in decent shape, despite being covered in leather that should be ruined by now. If the rest of the ship were in similar condition, things might be different around here. Flecks of rust fall from the ceiling and motes of dust float through the air. The Dancing Queen may have once been a luxurious, medium-sized cruise ship, but now she needs new paint, and the life support system needs an overhaul. She still flies, though. Somehow, against all odds, Cactus Jack has her in low orbit, around Io. The desert moon slowly slides past below, its terraformed surface a bland, tannish yellow. Three months ago, Cactus Jack found the abandoned wreck. He remembered some sort of scandal was associated with the cruise ship, but no one seemed to mind him doing some work on her. The first thing he got working was the old disc jockey robot. He thought it was a jukebox at first, but it's so much more. The thing even helped Cactus Jack catch a bounty two months ago, and it can apparently pilot the old mono racer that was parked in the Dancing Queen's well-equipped hangar. The robot calls itself Rockbot, and it acts as though it has formed some kind of attachment to Cactus Jack. 
There's something not quite right about Rockbot, but then again, there's not much about this ship that is right. The bounty they caught wasn't worth a lot. It was just a bail jumper. But it was enough money to get the Dancing Queen back in the air. Of course, that's the most important thing of all. Cactus Jack knows he can never go back to Io. Josh, why don't you describe this man sitting in the captain's chair on the Dancing Queen? Cactus Jack wears a cowboy outfit. He's got on a cowboy hat, a long brown duster bolo tie, and he's got a... His hair's reddish with gray in there, and he's got a big old handlebar mustache. And that's what Cactus Jack looks like. On his hip is a long-barreled six-shooter revolver. And usually a cigarette hanging from his lips. And Schubert, what does Rockbot look like? And is he in here with Cactus Jack? Uh, Yeah, I think Rockbot sort of just follows Cactus Jack around, trying to whatever tunes uh, Cactus Jack wants to hear, always veering towards rock, of course, and never playing jazz music. (laughs) And yeah, he he looks like a very, he's like a big hulking machine made of metal and uh, the paint is long since worn away and revealing his kind of somewhat rusted exterior similar to the ship. But Cactus Jack has done his best to shine him up, so he, he looks decent. He's a, he's a big hulking machine, and he is quite rectangular. He looks uh, a little bit like a jukebox. And indeed, he is one. Because <laughs> he is one. So what are you two doing? Well, I'll let you guys take it away from here, uh, just chatting it out. What's, uh, what's the plan? What are you two doing what, what, now that you've got the ship in the air? We're probably chatting about our next job because we need money to fix everything. Yeah, definitely. But do you have arms and legs? Like, what's the deal? Do you move by just shifting side to side and, like, scooting up? Are you like a Dalek? Yeah. What is, <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think how he's you... humanoid, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's pretty humanoid. I think he he has, like, the the torso of a jukebox, essentially. But he, I think he has big old arms and legs and a head. He has, he has to press the button on his own jukebox to, in order to make it work. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there like a Wulong slot? How does that work? A, a what? A what slot? A wul- <laughs> what? This yeah, is you a got a money show. slot? <laughs> you got a money sl- a slot for to put money in so you play music. Currency in this game is Wulongs. Oh, yes. Yes, right. <laughs> he sounded like he was about to be offended. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's just like what do I think? <laughs> yes, I do... <laughs> I do have a slot. For some reason, I'm, I'm picturing I'm looking kind of like Preacher Bot from Futurama, but I don't think that. I think he's blockier than even that, right? Do you guys remember who that is? Mm-hmm. Oh, I definitely remember Preacher Bot. Uh, let, me, yeah. like, let me look up Preacher Bot really quick. I'm, I'm kind of picturing like the stereotypical, like hulking old school robot. Yeah, I think Preacher Bot is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, basically yeah. Preacher Bot. What, what are you two doing right now then? I think Cactus Jack is looking down at Io, and it's kind of quiet, taking a big, long drag of a smoked cactus cigarette. You've got the television on in the background. It's on a lot of the time. Yeah. You know that Big Shot is going to be starting up soon, so you'll find out what the latest bounties are. I think uh, Rockbot is playing some soft country rock for Cactus Jack. Oh, nice. Yeah. Perfect. And um, he's kind of looking over at Cactus Jack, hoping that he'll break out of his days and trying to figure out if it's within protocols to interrupt him yet. Yeah, that's against the rules for sure. Yeah, and eventually he just uh, starts fading out the music. And he's like, Cactus, Cactus Jack, we should probably talk. Are you having an emotional moment? No, I I ain't Rocky. Thanks, though. Hey, um, listen, which one of your friends should we fix up first? I was looking at the bartender. I think that's where I should start. My friends? Yeah, the other robots on this ship. I do not consider them my friends. But I was thinking we would fix up the ship. And potentially me. Oh, well, what's wrong with you? I thought I did a good job. Oh, yes. You did an excellent job, Cactus Jack. You are so good with robots. But (laughs) I think I have maybe some crossed wires... Sometimes I have weird thoughts. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, uh, is that, dude, don't say. Right at that moment, 
big shot starts right on time. And you hear the familiar host, Punch and Judy. Howdy, amigos. How are y'all bounty hunters doing? And now it's time for Big Shot, the show that brings you the latest fugitives. We've got a big bounty announcement for you, amigos. Two dangerous members of that terrorist and human trafficking organization, the Hostat Network, have raided a government facility on Callisto. They're currently making a run for the Ganymede Gate to Mars. The ISSP is after them, too. But if you get the bounty first, there's a two million Wulong reward. Shucks, howdy. You're supposed <laughs> to bring the bounties in alive, but the most important thing is to recover the cargo, you know? Good luck, cowboys! And right at that moment, there's a flash as a group of ships fly right by. There's a small cargo ship being pursued by a strange-looking monoracer. And behind that, a group of ISSP patrol ships. Christina, what does that weird-looking mono racer look like? <laughs> weird? No. Uh... Well, it's got to be a little unusual looking, given how it's operated. Yeah, exactly. It is actually kind of shuttle-shaped, like the, like the old sort of space shuttle rocket shape. Like it actually looks more like a bullet than it does like a mono racer. Uh, normally. Yeah, and in the front is a like nose part that actually has like a chomper at the end for for chomping it's all good uh yeah it, it's actually just it's pretty pared down in the terms of like what a monoracer could look like so it's pretty streamlined yeah and, and it's, simple it's more for shooting forward than it is about like looking cool because it's not right. you know there to impress anybody what we have here is the beginning of of a possible pursuit of a bounty. So the way this game works is I start this first act of the game out. So the game is divided into three acts. They call them tabs. The first tab or the first act, I'm supposed to open an action clock and I'm supposed to decide, actually two action clocks, one for the objective and one for failure, when, uh, which is called a threat clock. And I need to set the number of ticks in the, each clock. I'm going to set the number of ticks in the objective clock and in the threat clock at four, I'm going to set the objective clock uh, genre. I have to choose the genre of the objective clock. So the way this game works is designed heavily around musical genres. It, it focuses on five genres, rock, dance, blues, tango, and jazz. And that applies to both tests when the players try to do something and to these clocks, which the players try to fill up their objective clock and I try to fill up the threat clock. So they're trying to succeed by filling their objective clock. I'm trying to make them fail by filling up the threat clock. So the five genres, starting with rock. Rock is about overcoming some powerful or uh, threatening person or object. Dance clock is about physical or energetic action or enthusiasm. Uh, Blues clock is about overcoming some doubt, regret, emotion, something like that. A tango clock is about persuading someone, seducing someone convincing, intimidating, something like that, manipulating someone into doing something you want. And then there's a jazz clock, which is about understanding something, solving an enigma, cracking a code, uh, etc. I'm going to make this one a dance clock. And it's got four ticks in it. And I'm going to make the threat clock a rock clock. All right. Now, for the objective clock... Any type of test that you do, you can choose the type of test you want to do, and you have to describe what you're doing. Any type of test can fill it until you get to the last tick. And then the last tick has to be a dance test Mm -hmm. because it's a dance clock. Got it. So this is where the actual gameplay begins. You have got to spend your resources to try to fill your objective clock, and I'm trying to stop you. Now, this is the first tab, and because it's the first tab, there are some rules that go along with being in the first tab. The difficulty that you're trying to overcome with your tests is five. So you're going to roll some dice. In the first tab, you only get one die to start with. You can allocate additional dice by using some of your resources or using a riff or one of the other things you can do. If you get some hits, then you can spend those hits to fill the objective clock or to reduce the difficulty of future tests in this tab in this act of the show, okay? I can use the risk that I have at the beginning, and you can use the, from the beginning, and you can use the rhythm 
that you have from the beginning as well. Before we even get into the tests, what do Rockbot and Cactus Jack do? What do they say? What do, they see these ships going by. This is the bounty that just came on. What are you going to do? Well, we can worry about your scrambled bean can later. Looks like we've got something to do. Let's get this queen dancing. Affirmative. And, I don't know, Cactus Jack does piloting stuff. Okay. <laughs> or is it better? <laughs> is it better for us to get in the smaller ships? Because this is a giant Probably uh, that. <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah. You could do either one. If you want to get this ship moving, just to, I'll give you some options for things you could do, right? You could say, I want to do a dance test to get quickly to my mono racer, right? I'm going to get there as fast as I possibly can. Uh, or you might say, I want to do a jazz test to try to use my expertise to get this big ship moving and chase the other ship, right? Because the, the dancing queen requires a bit of work to operate. So you could use your expertise. That's what a jazz test would allow you to do. And then you have to tell us which trait you're using. If you, you've got some traits on your character sheet, and you would apply those to give you extra dice on the test. Uh, so you tell me what you want to do, and I'll maybe help you interpret what that would mean rules-wise. Hmm. I'm just looking at my stuff. Yeah. I, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head that might come in handy here is Rockbot's Perfect Rhythm, which is a jazz ability. So that would be... Him kind of uh, formulating a plan, perhaps. Uh, it's tricky. <laughs> Maybe your perfect rhythm helps you somehow operate the ship. Maybe you're able to somehow uh, tune the engines or something to get it running a little bit more smoothly. Or maybe you play the perfect music for getting quickly down to the mono racers, if that's what you want to do, <laughs> to inspire faster movement. That actually sounds pretty great. I mean, they play <laughs> marching music for a reason, right? It's got to be helpful. So you're going to play a march? Well, no, I'm going to play like a very upbeat rock song. Okay. Maybe Run to the Hills? You play something that sounds kind of like that. <laughs> but, but it's not. But when we hear it in the background of the episode, it's not actually that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to call out certain songs if it's going to be really difficult for you to... <laughs> then Then you're going to want to replicate all of them. I could, I could make this very difficult. <laughs> It'll make it much easier for me if you just say, he plays some upbeat rock or something. Okay. That's what right? I'll say. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> Rockbot formulates the perfect plan. And... First, he plays some really upbeat rock music. Okay. Nice. And, uh, hey, which, Rocky, cut yeah. it out with the copyrighted content. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do a jazz test then? Yes. Jazz not being the type of music he's playing. Jazz is the genre that applies to the test he's doing. Exactly. He would never play jazz. Jazz is what you use for skilled action. You're doing a jazz test, and you're using... That trait, that trait gives you an extra die you can roll. Uh, do you want to do anything else? Do you want to spend any of your rhythm? Do you want to show off? You can only do that once per session. Show off is a riff that you can do. I can explain what that does if you want me to. Why don't we just do that so everybody can see what it looks like? So once per session, when a test has happened or is about to happen, a player can spend one rhythm to gain and spend a hit immediately. Uh, so this works even if it's someone else's test. It's like a hero point in Pathfinder. Right. Except it just gives you a success. Cool. So you could spend a rhythm to get a success if you wanted to. Or you could wait and roll first and see how you do. Right. But remember, the difficulty is five, which means uh, the way this will work is if you roll a total of a number that's greater than five, that's one hit. Mm -hmm. And if you roll a six on either of your dice, that's the second hit. Okay. You got this. Well, let's. Uh, it sounds like it would be smarter maybe to uh, wait for a failed roll to sure. to use that. Sure. But you can spend a rhythm to just get an extra die. Let's see. The riffs are get involved, gamble, show your wounds, push, show off, assist, improvise, and jam. And here in the first act or tab one, you can, let's see, I can spend risk to add one shock to any test. You can use a show-off riff starting here, but only once per session. Right. I can spend risk to impose disadvantage, and that's all I see here for tab one. Let me see if there's anything else I'm missing. Hang on. I do have a question. If you use one of your risks to uh, up the shock value, 
you do have to tell us that, right? Like, <laughs> okay. yes, that's right. Yeah. In fact, why don't I do that? Why don't we do that? I'm going do to it. spend one risk now, right? I started with four. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend one. Now I only have three left, and I'm going to raise the difficulty. I'm going to raise the difficulty to six. Yikes. Right. You need a perfect roll. Just to start out with just using the rules. Maybe it's louder in the ship than you expected as the ship gets going, and it's louder getting down to the, uh, the, the, the hangar, and so you have to really struggle to produce enough volume that uh, your music can be heard. Mm -hmm. So the difficulty is going to be six now. Right. So that means you have to roll a six or higher. And I'm rolling... 2d6 if you're using that trait. 2d6 because I have perfect rhythm. Okay. That's right. Well, let's just go ahead and roll. Well, does it, isn't it a jazz move in a jazz session? So it gets another one, right? Oh, that's true. Oh. It is a jazz move in Good a jazz catch. session. Good job, Josh. That's right. So he gets another six for matching the genre of the session. Nice. Take that, big shot. Ow. Thank you, Thank you Josh. <laughs> Somewhere in the universe. Oh. I rolled a one, a two, and a six. So that gives me nine total. Yep. So and that's two hits. Two hits. Yeah. That's right. And I get one shock that I can use from that. And I'm going to use that shock to uh, wound the, the trait that you used. Oh, oh no. Ooh, you get a slash. You get a slash in it. All right. And I also take a shock. Wait, you said you rolled a one, a two, and a right. six? Yes. Oh, I, I get take two, two shocks. Right. I two get two shocks. shocks. I get one automatically. No, wait. Actually, no. Is that right? You do get I one automatically. So. I get one, one automatically, one. but only if uh, only if you don't roll any. Yeah. Right? That, that, that one is the default only if you don't right. roll and any. And then if I roll any ones. Uh, if you roll a one, then I still just get the one oh, shock. Oh, I thought it was an additional one. So, yeah, I only get the one shock. Let's talk about shocks. So, you, you got two hits. <laughs> right. That's pretty good. Very good. We only need six hits total, right? Four hits total to fill this clock. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see. So shocks can cause you to lose access to your Sorry. character's resources or can go to the GM. So you can decide. Mm -hmm. You get to decide if you want to, oh. what you want to do with those shocks. You could take one to wound a trait. Right. Or you could use one to advance the, let's see. Uh, yeah, you can absorb up to two shocks with any additional shocks going to me. So you could shock one trait and give me the other shock. And can't I also like uh, advance the risk clock or is that something you do? That's something I could do with the shock if I wanted to. Gotcha. All right. I guess I'll just give you the shocks and you can just mess me up how you please. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wound your trait, but I can take both shocks and I can tick the threat clock twice with that. After correctly stating that the players suffer one shock from that test, I have now somehow talked myself into two shocks again. They're only supposed to suffer one shock in this case. Here's the correct rule. Every test gives a minimum of one shock. If the players don't roll any ones, there is still one shock generated. If the players roll a single one, they generate one shock. If they roll ones on two dice, they generate two shocks. If they roll ones on three dice, they generate three shocks, and so on. The automatic one-shock minimum only kicks in if they don't roll any ones. A player can remove up to two shocks by wounding a character trait or by marking a bullet, which we'll talk about later. Any shocks beyond that go to the big shot. Do it. Okay. All right. So I'm <laughs> going to tick the threat clock twice. So you're running down to the mono racers, but as you're doing this, this chase is continuing without you. You're losing time getting down to those mono racers. Fortunately, however, there is someone chasing them in this uh, unusual-looking, sleek mono racer. Does Bon want to do anything? Yes, Bon wants to chomp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's going to send out, uh, yeah, his chomping harpoon to try to Whoa. catch the wing of one of these ships, whichever one is the closest. How many are there? Just two or one? There's just one. Okay. There's just so one, one ship. Uh, but there are a bunch of other, basically, police ships yeah. pursuing as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't care about them. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to stop the bad guy. I assume he must be bad. That's how, <laughs> you know, that's how... That's how Cowboy Bebop works, right? All the bounties are bad people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm going to, I guess, I'm, well, I'm definitely going to use my chomping harpoon, which is part of the ship... 
descriptor words I have. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to get technical rules yeah. style. All right. Technically, we're not in a chase. Mm -hmm. We haven't officially started a chase. We're just sort of playing with the rules in general. Yeah. Which means you can't actually use your mono racer traits. Would you like me to start an official chase and open up a chase action clock? I think it makes sense in this case. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Ooh. let's do that. Let's make a chase clock. I was in a chase clock, even if they weren't in a chase clock. Okay. <laughs> do I have to choose a genre for a chase clock? I think chases do have their own genre. I think they do too. Let's make this one jazz. That's fine. I'll make this one a jazz clock. Oh no. It'll be a technical chase. And yeah, so you really got to use your expertise. Uh, we'll give it, oh, let's make it a four tick clock. All right. So we're in a chase cl uh, clock now. A chase, a chase just has slightly different rules. And you're going to try to chomp on this ship. Yes. So go chomp ahead. Chomp on a wing. You're using now one of your mono racer's traits, mm -hmm. which is the chomper harpoon. Yes. And you are, let's see, that is a, what kind of trait is that? That's a good question. I would say it's technical because it's a ship-based action. So jazz. I should talk about the chase rules a little bit. Every test that you do when you're in a chase must be pushed until there's at least one hit. To push a check means if you don't get your goal of two hits, you can use the push riff to immediately get a hit, but it costs you two shocks. Oof. All right. Yeah, okay. High stakes. Yeah, every test must be pushed until there's at least one hit. A bounty hunter is free to drop out of the chase before rolling the dice for a test, so if you get a bunch of shocks and you don't want to deal with them, mm -hmm. you can drop out. If all the bounty hunters drop out, the tab ends immediately with a failure. And if you're chasing the mono racers, make sure that any traits that are wounded are mono racer traits, and they must be hard wounds. They can't be recovered until the end of the session if you wound your mono racers traits. Current understanding is that mono racer traits don't have genres, mm -hmm. so you get to roll 2d6 on this test. Okay. <laughs> and the difficulty is still six. Excellent. Let's see how this goes. I got a six and a, a five. A six nice. and a five. Wow. Nice. Okay, so that's two hits. Yeah. You don't even have to push. No. The just the front of the point of the ship just all of a sudden just opens up and you see like, you know, those sort of like bear trap style chompers right. <laughs> at the front, and then all of a sudden it just shoots forward and grabbing onto the uh the wing of the bad guy ship. Just all of a sudden you see like a long string go out and then go taut and my ship just starts to like I try like the side has the rockets and the rockets like start to turn backwards so we can start pulling backwards. Nice. Cool. Wow. So all that happens. By the way, I should mention you can't see inside this thing. It's a, like a whole metal tube. <laughs> the uh, police are continuing to follow after they're falling a little bit behind. They're not as fast as this mono racer or this cargo ship. Does Cactus Jack get in his mono racer? Yeah, they're they're really cool running through the thing and love the music in the background. They're like there's like a set of stairs and they kind of jump on the railing and glide down and yeah, they, they get in there. They get in their mono racers. Okay, what is uh, what do their mono racers look like? What does Cactus Jack's mono racer look like? His mono racer is the calamity catfish. It's big and unwieldy for a mono racer. It looks like a giant catfish on the front with big whisker like protrusions coming out of it. Okay, and what does Rockbot's mono racer look like? So Rockbot's mono racer sort of looks like a big ugly taxi. <laughs> I, I imagine it's shaped like, imagine just like a the, like an Astro van from the eighties, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and kind of like yellow, and also the the paint, the yellow paint is kind of flaking off, and it is called the Flounder. Perfect. Okay, this is a mono racer that was left on the ship. Yeah, for some reason, someone left it behind, even though it's perfectly good. I don't know why they would. They just abandoned yeah. this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but it has anti-theft system, which is just looking hideous. <laughs> <laughs> it has some other features, too. Yes. All right, so does either of you want to use some of your mono racer traits to try to uh, advance this chase? Hmm. Sure. Cactus Jack will pilot the Calamity Catfish, get on the other side of it, because he's not friends with this other thing yet. 
that's pulling it away. So he's going to activate his gravity whiskers and try to capture the bounty from the other side of it or whatever there's. I assume this was the bounty. Is this total coincidence or is this like a random it encounter It is the here? bounty. Okay. Yeah, you think this must be the bounty. They're in the right place. Cactus Jack is going to get on the other side of it and say, not today. And then activate his own gravity whiskers and pull, you know, the whiskers on the front of the mono racer. It's, you know, turn on and then try to pull in the thing. So he's like tug of warring. The, so it's like a tractor ship. beam. Yeah, it's like, it's like a tractor beam, but more cool because it's gravity whiskers. But, yeah, I see. but whiskers. But whiskers. <laughs> yeah. I see. Totally different. Okay. So you are using one of your mono racers traits and you get one die by default. And I'm assuming you don't want to spend anything to get an extra hit or anything. So go ahead and roll your 2d6. Got a three and a five. Okay. So you got one hit. And you know what? I forgot to add the shock. I always get one shock at least. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that shock that I got from Bond's last test, and I'm going to bank that as risk. And there's another shock from this test. And for that one, I'm going to... Now, I can, I can choose to not succeed, can I? Because just to be awful. Could, I think. If you think it's more interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to actually tick the threat clock here. Oh, okay. So we're already at three. You're already at three. Uh-oh. Yeah. So I won't do that. I won't be the last. I won't be the one to make us <laughs> push over into the failure. Not the first okay. session. Maybe later. <laughs> Not the first part of the first session. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> There's yeah. still two more yeah. acts. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be cool if, like, we failed and we were pulling it apart and it split in half. Yeah, that'd be pretty <laughs> cool. I like it. Over the, your headset, though, you hear, and this is going to be, I am going to go with the fact that he has, like, push button uh-huh. talking. Uh-huh. So you just hear, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Over your headset. <laughs> <laughs> bad, no. <laughs> okay. And what is, uh, is anybody like else going to do anything? I, I guess um, Rockbot and Cactus Jack are in communication with each other through right, their Right, and you hear this voice racers. coming over the radio. Yeah. Cactus Jack, we need to get this bounty before this other bounty hunter gets them. Rocky, give me some help! I will do my best. And then Rockbot. He, he sees uh, this situation is going to quickly get out of hand, so he just is going to go as fast as he can in the flounder. Uh, which isn't that fast, but <laughs> hopefully just fast enough that he can use his burrowing drill, which he has on the front of the flounder, to uh, dig it into this other ship and incapacitate it. Okay. 2d6. Mm-hmm. I rolled a six and a three. Wow, you guys are doing amazing. Okay, so you get another tick on your clock, bringing it up to three. Nice. And I get another shock, though. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to use that to advance the threat clock. Now, can't I? Can't I decide to uh, hurt, like damage my burrowing drill? Mm-hmm. That's right. Actually, you could. There's one threat from this. Do you want to absorb the threat? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you want to wound that trait. So that means that the mechanical drill is wounded. You put a little line through it. And it means you can't use it again yeah. this session. All wounds to your mono racers are hard wounds. You can't refresh them. I think that makes sense. So the flounder just careens into this uh, other bounty hunter's mono racer. The drill stabs into the ship and tears the ship apart, but also tears the drill apart. And you just see metal flying everywhere. So you've got your chase clock currently at three. And the threat clock is currently also at three. Right. Oop. At this point, you get a transmission over your radios, and it says, You have to let us go. Don't help the ISSP. We can't tell you why for your own safety. Please. Hmm. Anybody else want to do anything? They are moving as quickly as they can, even with these holes that you've gouged and chomped in their ship. They're flying as quickly as possible toward the Ganymede Gate. Well, they must be going slower, because we are pulling on them. That's true. Yeah. They are slowing down a little bit, but... You haven't slowed them down enough to capture them according to the current action clock. Right. So I'm going to 
with this extra weight on me, <laughs> try to, uh, yeah, instead, I guess, of pulling my ship to, or pulling their ship to me, I'm actually going to use my tautness to pull into that ship <laughs> to, okay. to oh, try nice. to catch up more. Let's see. You've already used the chomper harpoon. I guess it's not wounded. You can use it again, right? Yeah. And I'm still using it. Yeah. I rolled a three and a one, so... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so as I'm trying to pull with this extra weight that's never supposed to have been on the spire before, it, it just starts to come apart, like, you know. Yeah, you tear a piece off the ship and then let go. It just The ship just zooms away. Oh, uh, that is oof. actually two shocks. Big Shot's note. No, it's not two shocks, it's one shock, because she rolled one on one of the dice. Oh no, so I had to exit out. You could, or or I could take them both. Um, For future use against sounds you. Sounds like you were kind of describing how it also damaged your thing. Yeah, so I will say it's damaged for now, yeah. So that makes sense. Okay, so I'll exit out. All right, and I'll use the other one to advance the threat clock. Oh, no. Just weirdly over your headsets, though, you do hear just a, like a, ow! <laughs> like a just a mad howl. <laughs> Rockbot is very confused. At, at that, <laughs> a couple things happen. First, this ship drops something out the back like a hatch opens and something falls out the back and there's a big explosion of wires in every direction Whoa! and it explodes right in the midst of all the ISSP patrol vehicles and they all just sort of stop moving uh, stop maneuvering and just start floating aimlessly it looks like it has some sort of EMP Oh! it exploded behind all of you so you're still moving you can still follow it but it moves through the gate and disappears and you know that it, it will reappear the other end of the gate and the other end of the gate opens at Mars full speed ahead Rockbot's going for it here's the catch it costs money to go through a gate <laughs> that is the catch but the good news is you hear your radios crackle to life and a voice says this is the ISSP we order you to follow that vehicle through the gate they've somehow hacked it so they didn't have to pay but we'll send in an order for you to follow them it'll take a moment to process so you really have to hurry to catch up with them. 10-4. I, I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you'll all want to get on board the Dancing Queen if you're going to all go through the gate, probably. Right. Yeah, we got to return to our ship. And All right. Well, then I guess Rockbot and Cactus Jack would start heading back to the ship. Now, what is Bond going to do? These two other ships that were sort of helping? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> They're sort of helping, sort of getting in your way. We're rivals at this point. Yeah. They both fly back to this big ship, which is flying toward the gate. That's pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get behind their ship, the big one, and then we're going to go with you together. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. You're going to sneak through. You're going to tailgate them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're going to draft their... Their bigger ship. Draft, that's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm using their speed to increase my speed. Well, that doesn't work in space, I guess. But <laughs> but you don't know that. <laughs> I don't know until I try. Yeah, so this ship, as you pull behind this larger ship, uh, I don't know if you know what a cruise ship is. No, it's just a big, ugly ship. <laughs> it's a big... It probably was beautiful at one point in time, but now it's all rusted and it needs new paint and it's got windows that have just been blocked up with some sort of uh, plastic substance because they couldn't find a, a proper replacement. It's just falling apart, although it looks like it could have been a nice ship at some time. She's still beautiful to me. At the end of tab one, the first act, you fly through the astral gate in pursuit of your bounty. Fade to black. We're now back in Act 2. And in Act 2, the rules change a little bit. You gain some extra abilities to move the action forward. According to the text, it's the main part of the story where you really get into the pursuit or investigation. The base difficulty for any test is now 10. But you get to roll two dice for every test. Mm -hmm. And this 10 can be modified by shocks or by... Well, I'm sorry. It can be modified by rhythm or that you spend, you could spend rhythm to bring that down. I can spend risk to bring it up. 
You can still show off if you haven't already done that. So you can just choose to spend a rhythm to get a hit. You can use the assist riff by spending a point of rhythm. Uh, that means you can help someone else. You can now use the improvised riff as well by spending a point of rhythm. Uh, we can talk about what those do if you want. I can use the same abilities as in tab one, and I can spend one risk to add two shocks to the result of a test. And these have to be spent immediately, and I can't stash them for later. You exit the gate at Mars, and because you are a bit behind, you are not right on the tail of this other ship anymore, and you can tell that it is heading for the Mars Earth gate. That is, it's making a beeline for the gate to Earth, which is a little strange, because if these are members of this terrorist network or human traffickers, there's not much on Earth. Earth is just kind of a wasteland. I think a few people still live there, but ever since the Astral Gate accident destroyed most of the moon, there's not a lot going on on Earth anymore. Right. Hmm. What do you want to do now? I think we want to follow them, but uh, make sure they uh, don't think we're still following them, and then wait till, you know, wait till they land, and then maybe try to have more of a chat with them. Try to use some diplomacy. I see. So this one, we're not doing a chase. We're doing more of an investigation, stealthy, careful approach. Yeah, if Christina and Josh are into that. Uh, sure. I mean, technically, I'm doing my own thing, but right now I'm, I'm just observing. <laughs> so what kind of objective clock do you think that is? Do you think that's jazz? Or do you think that's... If, it's a, if we're talking about chatting with them, that's a tango. Tango? Okay, we can make it a tango clock. Yeah, I was thinking either tango or blues, depending on how it goes. We would have caught them already if it weren't for that dad gum other bounty hunter. All right, let's make the threat clock a rock clock again. You're following at a distance. What do you want to do, or what are you talking about? What do, I guess maybe what do we see? Do you, you get back on your ship, and you're just flying your ship sort of casually at a distance? Your mono racers are back on board. I don't know if you've noticed this other ship following you. No. I think we're probably too focused on the ship that we're following. Okay. To notice that there's a ship that's, uh, I don't know if, if you kind of like attached yourself to the, to the back of our hull or something, or you're just like, yeah, off to the side somewhere. Well, that but... could be, that could be a check that, uh, that Bond could make to yeah. try to stealthily attach to the dancing queen. Uh, I'm stealthily trying to board their ship. <laughs> oh, okay. You're stealthily trying to... Okay. <laughs> right, you, could fly into their, you could try to fly into their garage, their hangar. Their ship has a real nice garage. Yeah. The trick is that it's closed right now. Right. Yeah, just hack into our computer, mm -hmm. open the open the bay door, and then just fly yourself in. It sounds easy enough. So we're not in a chase, so you can't use your mono racer traits, but you can use some of your other traits. Yeah, what I think I want to use is or have had used, is while they were parking, I'm going to use my radar ears and jazz mm -hmm. to hear what buttons he pushed for his garage password. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, you're doing a little bit of light hacking, let's say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, go ahead and roll 2d6. All right. So here we are at the start of this tab. I'm going to spend one of my risks that I have to increase the difficulty from 10 to 11. Oh, gosh. Oh, so close. Uh, I got a five and a two. Okay. So I can push, right? You could push. Should we talk about your options? Yeah. So I said that you can now, you could always show off, mm -hmm. right? So you could spend a rhythm to get a hit. You could assist or improvise. So what are those? Assist is when you spend a point of rhythm to give advantage to another player. We'll talk about that. what that means in, in, if you do it. And improvise means that you invoke a trait from some other approach and apply it to this one. So, for example, the player decides to use a dance trait for a test, trying to beat up a security guard, but also decides to improvise using a rock trait as well. So, in other words, you could apply two traits. Yes. I don't have a trait I think that would really work for this, okay. though. That's the thing. Okay. I just crash into their... <laughs> I just crash into their garage. <laughs> <laughs> You could do that. <laughs> I was going to say you could show off and just get a hit. No. I'm just getting it. Like, I thought I heard the right beeps, but I didn't. But we're still going full speed ahead. 
<laughs> All right, so you crash into their garage. Of course, the difficulty is, I guess you probably have some kind of spacesuit or something, right? Yeah. Okay. So you crash into their garage. The two of you hear a, th- a loud sound of rending, ripping, tearing metal. Yeah, I mean, remember, it is bullet-shaped, this shit. So. Right. As something punches through your garage, through the hangar door. Wow. <laughs> Rockbot, did you leave the microwave on for seven hours again? <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, at one point on the threat clock. I'm going to use that one point of shock that you generated to get a point on the threat clock. And no ticks on the objective clock yet. Mm-hmm. Coming into the ship, then I guess you tell me what do you want. To, what are you willing to do? You're in this ship. It's no better looking on the inside than the outside. <laughs> there are two mono racers here, but they're not there. You guys aren't there, right? They've, I assume, have gone up to the helm, probably. Yeah, I think that's where we were hanging out when we heard the noise. Yeah, we're getting alarms, and we're we're seeing that something happened, and we're probably headed back down to the to the thing once we find out that it wasn't the microwave. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to track them down, I think. Okay, so you move out of the hangar through the airlock. Uh, you're wearing your spacesuit. Now that you've moved through the airlock, you can take the helmet off if you want to or open it. You probably have a way to open it. So you're in the hallway. You're going to go look for them. Yeah, I'm going to use my cybernetic legs, though, to chase them down. <laughs> Sounds terrifying. You made me mad. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm going to do a dance cybernetic legs. Okay. Oh, my God. He's rolling 3d6, right? Oh, okay, one more. <laughs> like, it's not good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I got two threes and a one. Oh, man. That's two shocks generated. Mm-hmm. No, that's one shock generated. Do you want to take that as a wound for one of your traits? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take one of them as risk that I'm going to store, and I'm going to move the threat clock forward again. Oh, no. Well, I don't catch up with them, but they can hear me, and I. you can hear just like a loud kind of like clomping, metallic clomping coming towards you. Right. I think what happens is they get distracted from their pursuit a bit, and they get the jump on you. Heck yeah. So the two of you round a corner, and what do they see? Christina, what is it that they see here in this corridor facing away from them? Well, right now you see somebody that looks like they're on all fours in a spacesuit, <laughs> like <laughs> looking around. Terrifying. You probably have corridor lights that light up as you go around places, you know, like a sensor. So the sensor flicks on uh, in there and all of a sudden you see my face, which is, yeah, this little gray face dog. He's got a little white line that goes between his eyes to his nose, and you startle him. <laughs> he jumps up. Are you like panting? Or are you excited? Yeah, exactly. I'm panting. I look stressed. Uh oh. Yeah, that's what you see right now. I start barking at you. <laughs> so Cactus Jack spins the corner around with his revolver, like fully extended, and the hammer drawn back, and and suddenly his target's down the ground. Sees it's a dog, and the, what in thunderation? Rockbot, you you see this? I do, and I don't know what kind of music to play. <laughs> <laughs> is that a dog? I think it is a dog. I ain't seen a dog since I was knee high. I do not have the programming required to deal with this, but you may <laughs> use me as a shield if you wish. What? What do we do? Sh- should we eat it? That was a joke. That was a joke. Everybody, that was a joke. <laughs> I start growling because I'm like, what? I think if I can find the perfect music, it will soothe it. Do you want to try to find the perfect music to soothe the dog? Do you, do you want that to be a test? Uh, no, not really, because I feel, because I'm against that concept in reality. <laughs> <laughs> the soothing, the savage beast. Yeah. yeah. Everybody well, seems no to think dog, music but... soothes dogs, but, yeah. but that's true. I mean, Bond yeah, is... I am not an ordinary dog. Yeah, Bond is not an ordinary dog. You seeing a dog in a spacesuit right now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't want to make any assumptions about Bond. So, you know, scratch that. Yes. Let's let's do it. Okay. Let's try to soothe Bond. All right. So what are you using? You're using 
hulking jukebox? I or... think I was gonna use my hulking jukebox. I see as more of a thing to use as a threat or to damage people or something. Well, I think you should use master of ceremonies. That's what I was gonna say. I think yeah. that's more, and that's my tango trait. So that's more about persuasion. Right. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And I get three dice, right? That's correct. Using a trait, and this is the second tab, so you get two dice. Perfect. And you could, of course, spend rhythm if you wanted to to get other advantages. If yeah, if I'm thinking of this right, I can use I can use a rhythm to also add my trait that I'm a hulking jukebox. Sure. Yes, that's right. Even though it's not the same uh, approach. Just to add another dice, just because while I am playing this wonderful song, I'm also, I was going to say a human shield, but a robot shield protecting Cactus Jack and and more than anything, just getting in the way of uh, Vaughn. So four dice. Wow. I got a result of 15. Oh my goodness. Wow. And I did roll one six and no ones. All right. So that's two hits. And just one shock generated automatically. Yep. Uh, do you want to absorb that shock, or do you want me to use it? Uh, I can't really see why I would be damaged or anything in this scene, so you can you can use it, or you can damage me if you think you can make it make sense. I'll I'll use it. I'll um I'll advance the uh, threat clock by one as you continue oh, no. not piloting the dancing <laughs> queen. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. The bounty. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of music is the perfect music to calm down Bon? Um, Bon likes um, hmm. What does Bon like? I'd say like yeah, just some sort of country western like real strumming guitar. I happens. was thinking, what about like some classic, very old school rock and roll, like your Elvis Presley type of rock and roll. Well, I was sort of thinking old school country, like very like croony style. Well, he refuses to play straight country. Okay. Well then. (laughs) (laughs) Rock is the closest you can get. Yes. Yeah. Rockbuster's playing Elvis and and Cactus Jack is like, what I tell you about the trademark stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Then, then you just skip over, and it's it's just like I don't know. It's just something soothing. I feel like. Oh, I like. got it. I got it. I got it. How about you start playing something that Bond doesn't like, and then you turn it off, and that makes Bond calm down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would just like, start playing really, really loud rock and roll. Yeah. And, yeah, you're and, blasting at me. And, sure. Bond. and it's the turning it off that makes Bond happy. How's that? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you're just blasting sure. music at me, and I. And at first, my, you see my ears are back, but then you turn it off, and Bond kind of tilts his head to the side, and you see him sit down. Oh, cute. And, uh, and his helmet, like, whoosh, just flies back. Oh, neat. So there's a dog in a spacesuit on your ship. Good boy. <laughs> uh, how did you want to spend those hits? You got two hits. You could advance the objective clock. Y- yeah, I think we want to advance the objective clock. I mean... Hopefully having all all of us on board at least will... Yeah, that'll help. We can formulate a plan and get the bounty together, so... Okay. Two ticks on the objective clock and three ticks on the threat clock. What else do you want to do now that you've got this dog on your ship and it doesn't seem like it's a threat? Well, where, where's your owner, boy? <laughs> I growl. <laughs> 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 It appears that this dog is its own owner. (laughs) We should get back to chasing our bounty before they get away. Agreed. (laughs) So how you know he agrees is that uh, Bond jumps up and and starts running from the direction you guys were coming in towards, uh, I assume, is the control room. (laughs) Yep. So you run to the bridge. Mm -hmm. You guys going to follow the dog? That is not where we keep our treats. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, we follow. All right. So the crew runs down the corridors, up the steps to the bridge, and you can see now that uh, the other ship is on the verge of going through the astral gate. Now, you're not sure if you still have permission to go through the next gate or not. You don't know if the ISSP has passed that along or not. I'm sure it'll be fine. How about Bond beats them to to the helm's place and jumps in the pilot seat? 
and beats Captain <laughs> Jack there completely. I <laughs> I sit there uh, and I look well, cool for a dog. <laughs> this is the strangest day I've ever had. What do you want to do? Do you want to try to speed up to catch up to the ship? Do you want to do something to make sure you can get through the gate? What, what, what do you want to try to do next? They seem like they're in trouble. We've got a tango clock, right? right? We want to maybe convince them we're on their side and get them on our ship somehow? Is that even like a... You think that's even realistic? I was thinking that, but I feel like we don't have enough time, maybe. Like, we need maybe. to maybe... I was thinking we mean, might need to convince... We can control the story, right, Mike? So we yeah. can say, like, maybe they can't... Their hack doesn't work, and so then they're stuck outside the gate, and so then we can... Yeah, if, That gives if, us time to roll up on them. If your tests go well, right? If your tests go well, then we can say that's what happens. If your tests go badly, then they, they proceed, and, and uh, you're not able to, you know, mm-hmm. persuade them of anything or not able to catch up or whatever. You tell me what you want to do. Yeah, we could try to persuade the... Uh, the the guys who run the gate, yeah, the you know, gate operator. That we have permission to go through. Yep, you could do that too. You could do a maybe a tango check to persuade the gate corp uh, employees. What do you think, Cactus Jack? You're very charismatic. Just convince them. <laughs> That's right. I can talk them out of anything. And Cactus Jack's tango uh, is a, is his revolver, which I'm not sure how he's going to use over over the thing. <laughs> And so maybe, maybe yeah. The the video turns on and they're talking to the gate operator. And you know, this is Gate Corp. How can we help you? I hey, Gate Corp. Uh, listen up. We're chasing down a bounty and they're about to head through your gate. And so all our records say they're clear. Uh, don't let them through and let us through. Listen, he he shows he pulls out his revolver. I'm not sure how I'm going to work that into it. He, I do have a he, quick question uh, before you. Yeah. Just, uh, oh, this one's for Josh. What's your groove? I forgot. My groove is out of the box. And so maybe now he's being out of the box by trying to threaten a gate operator with the revolver virtually. <laughs> the gate operator goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Even though the gun's nowhere near him. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty intimidating. He puts up his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so he... He cactus jack kind of rips out the revolver, kind of opens up the chamber slot, and then the the... The one unique thing about this gun is that it's a six shooter, but one of the chambers is like filled filled up with metal, so it's more like a five shooter right now. And then Cactus Jack closes it again and says, "And we're gonna get him, and you're gonna let us." And I don't know, he'll roll. Okay. So what is that? So I use, I'm using a tango, and I get two base die already, so that's three. That's right. If you wanted to use your out of the box, you could add a shock to your check, and you could turn a two, three, four, or five into a six. But you'd do that after you roll. Right. So I'll roll the three. See what I get. Got a four, two, and a five for an eleven. Okay. So that's a success because the DC is eleven. The difficulty is eleven. That's one hit. Do you want to change one of the other numbers into a six and get two hits? Yeah. Let's do. Let's use these powers. Why not? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to give me one shock. And you advance the uh, the uh, objective clock by two, Ooh. so it's now up to four out of six. I'm going to advance the threat clock with my one shock. I'm going to advance it by one to four. All right, so we're at four on the objective clock and four on the threat clock. And the threat clock is also six. Yeah, they're both six. They're both okay. six clocks. Gotcha. I'm just going four, six, eight for the moment. The game's guidance about how to set up the clocks I gotcha. is really scanty. There's just not... A, a lot of information or guidelines about how to do it, so I'm just gonna do make. I'm just gonna make them four, six, eight. So yeah. So the gate operator says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Mister, <laughs> don't, don't have to get violent. Uh, I see here we got a message from the ISSP saying there'd be some cowboys coming through. So why don't you just hurry on through and put that thing away before somebody gets hurt?" That's good. I'm glad you see it my way. A, and Cactus Jack slowly puts it away as if it's any real threat to this person. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially billions of miles away almost. I really love that, but <laughs> that, that worked. You are catching up to them. That ship is starting to go through the gate. What else do you want to do? You got a couple more ticks on your objective clock, a couple more ticks on the threat clock. What else do you want to try? You want to try to do some fancy flying? Do you want to send them a signal, try to convince them to slow down. Yeah, I think that would be fun, is to send them some kind of message. Now to fill, remember, to fill the objective clock here, it's a tango clock. Mm -hmm. So to fill this clock, you've got to use a tango test. Yes. 
Do you have any tango tests, uh, Christina? I have an intimidating presence. Oh, now that we have this uh, scary-looking dog with us, I mean, no offense, buddy. You're really cute, <laughs> but you scared the bejesus out of us. <laughs> he um, just tilts his head the other way. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this Rockbot's voice talking, or is this? No, I can't no. keep a I can't keep a straight voice with this character. Okay. <laughs> Rocky, you've ch- you've changed suddenly. No, I was always like this. <laughs> I've never changed. Skeebly Bob. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard to do a voice. Ignore that. <laughs> That's why I cheated. <laughs> I think we should call the other ship, and with our newfound dog friend, we should tell them that they don't stand a chance of getting away and should surrender now. What's uh, what's your name, anyway, boy? Is, is Bond wearing a collar? What's the deal? Uh, yeah, he has a collar on. That's actually where the helmet kind of goes into. It's it's how it both deploys and undeploys. Oh, that was collar cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. And the caller says Bon, B-O-N. Yes, B-O-N in, in big chunky letters. Bon, what kind of name is that? You know, what's Bon mean? It is backwards for knob. <laughs> oh, right. Of course. I can't believe I didn't see that in the first place. How'd you not know that that's what I wanted to be called? <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check I didn't read it backwards. Okay, no, it's, it's Bon. Okay, well, Bon, good boy. All right, let's get let's patch these guys through and see if we can uh, talk them into the ship. We got this uh, th- threatening looking dog. You got me with uh, with my six shooter and uh, and the talking robot jukebox thing. Now let me remind you, Bon, you have a trait that lets you use blues and rock for tango tests. Yes, right. Your 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 groove. So oh. you could. Use some of your other abilities. You could use soul searching eyes along with your intimidating presence, for example. Right. And use and to use two traits. That sounds good. I was thinking it, it does make sense that I will help. Um, but I think it sounds more like it should be an assist. Assist, okay. Yeah. So I can assist uh you the cactus jack just because you know, I can't actually talk, so they'll just see a dog looking at them and they won't <laughs> know exactly what the what they want. Okay, so Cactus Jack, you want to make the call over to that other ship, maybe? Yeah, well, what do you think, Rocky? We want to get them on board our ship somehow? I think we should call them and try to make some kind of deal. Agreed. All right, let's patch them through. All right, so you call the other ship, and you see up on your screen are two people. There's a, a man and a woman. And you can see that the the ship that they're in looks like it's in kind of rough shape from some damage that it's taken from somebody who drilled into it and someone who (laughs) chomped it, maybe. And uh, there are some sparks flying from some panels, but it's still flying. And you can see in the room behind them, there's this cargo chamber and the hold, I guess you'd call it. And you can see a big black box in it. A big, uh, it's like three feet wide and five feet long. Hmm. Right? And uh, they turn on the, the, the screen. What do you want? What do you cowboys want with us? Says the man. Listen, your, your ship ain't going to make it where you're going. Just come on board with us and let's talk it out. We'll work it out. Make a test here. You are using what for your uh, for this check? Well, that's what I was going to ask. How do I actually assist him? Do I need to roll first? You spend a point of rhythm and that just means okay. you get to add your intimidating presence Mm. to this check if you want to. Yes. Can I also assist? Sure. Yeah. I might might play some light rock in the background. Okay. Some light rock. (laughs) All right. So you can also assist by spending a rhythm. So that's two assisting traits that you've got here. And are you using any traits for this? Oh, yeah. Cactus Jack, he takes out that that revolver again uh-huh. that's mm-hmm. threatening <laughs> through time mm-hmm. and space. And, <laughs> and they both go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's fucking and, crazy and, here. And, he, and he's, <laughs> when he says, Let, we can work it out, he puts it down like on, on a counter as, as if that's like, that's it's the, the threat table. has been removed. You're right. Okay. <laughs> he's, uh, he's unarmed himself. Okay. We, they, they both wipe their brows off. <laughs> <laughs> he put it down. All right. We're safe. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll the check. You've got three traits that you're using for this. It's the second tab, so there's two dice to start with. So you're rolling five dice here. 
Five ones. I can only hope. Okay, so we got 21 total, one one, and one six. Wow. A Thanks. one and a six, and what else? A four, five, and a five. Okay, so they do they exceed 11? Yeah, they yeah so they exceed 11. Oh, yeah. So that's two hits and one shock. Yeah, one shock. Okay, I'm going to bank that shock as risk because I can't fill that clock anymore because you just filled the objective clock. Woohoo! So uh, they look at each other. The woman steps forward and she says, Look, we're not, we're not human traffickers. We're freeing people from bondage. So maybe, maybe you follow us down and we'll talk. Cactus Jack looks at his two compatriots over at the dog, which has like almost understanding look on its face. Oh, that sounds good to me. What about you boys? I think Rockbot just says, yes, we <laughs> can talk. And then <laughs> one eye like does the slowest like winking animation <laughs> you've ever seen. Uh, yeah, you just see Vaughn's tail wag. Cute. They must they must be confused because a dog is piloting our ship. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I was gonna do an eight clock for this last step. We're gonna make it real quick. We're gonna make it a two clock. Oh gosh. So you follow them through the gate to Earth. And they send you some coordinates, and you notice that they're very skillfully avoiding all the debris in orbit. And they're going to what looks like a ruined city. And as they descend toward this ruined city, which is just a bunch of skyscrapers, uh, the ruins of skyscrapers protruding from the ocean, they land on top of one of them and they uh, wait for you to land. And your ship lands. I don't know. You can tell me. Do you need to do any checks? Do you need to do any tests to get your ship down successfully and follow them? Uh, what kind of tests do you think we should do here? Hmm. Well, it, it depends who's piloting. Is Bon piloting our ship now? Apparently. <laughs> I think Bon should have to roll a check because Bon has not never, ship. never piloted our ship before. Yeah, that's true. And, and we're it's just, funny that you guys just let this happen. And apparently yeah. we're just standing <laughs> I mean, back like in awe. <laughs> that this is happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're just like, is this really happening, Cactus Jack? <laughs> uh, you just see my paws pushing on buttons and things like that. I ain't uh, sure how he's doing that without human hands, but <laughs> this is amazing. I do have it's, cybernetic legs, to be fair. Oh. But, uh, I'm going to make this a jazz clock. Okay. Uh, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to make it a blue. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, make it a jazz clock. <laughs> Jazz clock? Okay, I'll make it a jazz clock. And it's just got two ticks in it. Same with the threat clock. The threat clock's going to be a blues clock. I don't think it actually matters for the threat clock. You know why it doesn't matter in the end? Because I'm going to use my special ability to just say uh-huh. that we land perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your special, your groove, you mean? Not my, oh, not the groove, but the, um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, the groove. Ugh, there's so many things. No, wait, no. The one that lets me do it like a one success on any test. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you're going to, what is that? Improvise? I think you're thinking of, um, show off. Yeah. Show off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Show off means you yes, can spend one rhythm and gain right. a hit immediately. Yes. So I will spend a rhythm. Okay. You spend a rhythm and gain a hit immediately. You can't do that again this session, but that's okay. That's okay. You just see, I am improvising, but you see my eyes darting around and my, my little dog, uh, cyber paws are, Clicking on buttons like faster than you actually can uh, expect a dog to move. Oh my dog! <laughs> <laughs> the whole time my tail is wagging because I'm like this ship's easy in his dog head. <laughs> <laughs> this is so easy. <laughs> you skillfully pilot the ship down, and you land on the top of this skyscraper on this landing platform next to this somewhat beat up cargo ship. And uh, I guess you're going to exit. You can see the two crew members step out the back of the ship. The, the cargo gangplank on the back of the ship folds down, and they walk out the back and stand watching as your ship lands. Uh, they look unarmed, probably. Maybe they have hidden weapons. What do you want to do? Uh, do you want to you want to just land and walk out as well? I yeah. think uh, Rockbot needs to go get some treats for Bomb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But uh, Cactus Jack, you can go meet him. Uh, I'm still in the process of doing all the landing procedures. 
Y'all sure you don't want to go out into the uh, apocalyptic wasteland? And... <laughs> okay, fine. I'll go by myself. I just meant, like, that it would be funny if, like, Rockbot got some treats for Bon, but then then I think he would, Rockbot would join Cactus Jack to head out and meet these guys. Do you keep dog treats on the ship? Every treat is a dog treat. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair point. <laughs> They're really old and stale from before. Yeah. That's the one thing you can't breed out or like, uh, yeah. you know, breed out of a dog. <laughs> They're permanently omnivorous. Yeah. I'm just imagining like Cactus Jack sent Rockbot out for like a food run at some point and he just brought back he dog brought food. Back dog. <laughs> they actually have eat, like right? a ton of like yeah. kibble that Jack. Maximum ate. calories per Wulong. <laughs> and once in a while, Cactus Jack gets desperate enough to eat some. <laughs> well, they're edible. <laughs> Don't right, taste too so bad. They leave crumbs in my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Cactus Jack, you walk out of the ship and your robot friend, Rockbot, comes out shortly after behind you. And you see these two people standing there. They're both wearing... What look like lab coats? They're wearing uh, and just you know slacks, and uh, one of them, the the woman has some sunglasses on. Uh, the man is a darker haired guy. He's got short, close cropped hair. Uh, they're staying there watching you. The woman speaks up and she says, "Well, what now? You are under arrest." <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna talk. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, here we go. That sets the mood. <laughs> Uh, they look at each other alarmed. No, wait. <laughs> Skippity bop bop do. Ignore everything I have said. No, don't mind, my friend. He's got his wires crossed. What is it you were talking about? Do you, do you have to wear like a spacesuit on Earth in uh, this universe no. or no? No, you don't. Okay. No, you can just you can just walk out. The air is still breathable, and even the, the planet's even starting to recover somewhat. But because of frequent. Rock falls, you know, meteorites hitting the surface. It's just not a great place to live. Maybe you checked the weather forecast. They, they, they include uh, uh, meteorites as part of the weather forecast here nowadays. So maybe you check the weather forecast and it says it should be fine. Okay. Or maybe we didn't. Is this a, And this is a jazz clock that we're trying to get one more success on? That's right. What's, uh, what's your success? Or it's your jazz, sorry, jazz trait, rock bot? Uh, perfect rhythm. It's my jazz train. Oh man, let's combine them. I got robot whispers, so you start to act all weird, and then I like kind of I yeah. Fonzie the jukebox. <laughs> I, like, I love that. So yeah. Cactus Jack gives it a little <laughs> pop, pop on the side, <laughs> and then you start playing some nice music instead of uh, instead of telling them they're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was it you were what was it you were going on about? Make a roll, a jazz roll, to see if this works. Rockbot, you're spending a point of rhythm to assist. Yes. And so you're rolling 4d6, Cactus Jack. <laughs> I'm I'm helping by being broken. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I got a 2, 4, a 3, and a 1. Oh. And oh. I, I think that, that we good. will use our all, all of our tools to try to get this working. So I can use my out-of-the-box. What else can we do to, to uh, try to succeed here? I mean, don't one of you still have a success thing? Yeah, I think we both do. Or can you only use your groove once a session? I think you could use show off, Cactus Jack, couldn't you? You haven't used yeah. it yet. Okay, I'll use you show off. You can spend a rhythm to just get a hit right away. Let's do that. Let's use show off. So what's your total? Total is 10. Oh, wait a second. We're in the third tab. Right. You need to roll an extra D6. I, I keep forgetting. Oh, right. So in the third tab, you roll three dice. And the DC is now 15. Okay, well, I just rolled a 5 on that last dice. So I got to 15. You got to 15. Yeah. Okay, so you Woo. got uh, one hit, and if you spend another one, then that's... If you spend your rhythm, then that's two hits. Okay. Well, you only needed one hit. The clock is full. You managed to get Rockbot to play something more soothing instead of threatening them. <laughs> and uh, well, I don't know, what kind of music is it? Light rock again? Um, yeah, it's like a, a rock ballad. Oh, Okay. They both look a little bit more relaxed, and the woman says, look, maybe if we showed you who our bounty was, maybe you would let us go. Yeah, do that. <laughs> well, okay, follow me. <laughs> and they lead you into the hole to that black box. Okay. And 
the woman pushes a button on the side of it, and the top of it sort of folds open and slides off to the sides. And you see inside this black case, in, in some sort of cryogenic sleep, is an infant. And an infant that has some sort of tube attached to its arm. And the woman says, we rescued this child from the, the, the research facility on Callisto. This government research facility was doing some kind of experiment. We don't know. We're part of a network. The Hofstadt Network, we, we try to rescue people who are the subjects of corporate or government experiments, and we're trying to take this child to safety. <sighs> don't, don't hand this child back over to the police. They'll just hand the child back over to the government on Callisto. Cactus Jack takes out a cigarette, lights it up in front of this child. <laughs> they're, inside, they're inside of the, the thing. The child's asleep, to be fair. Inside the stranger ship. Looks over at uh, Rockbot and says, "What do you think? That this don't sound like it's worth two million wulong." Hmm. I was thinking we could offer to split the money with them in exchange for this thing. I don't know, Rockbot. They they're not going to agree to that. It is only half the size of a regular human. <laughs> <laughs> How useful could it be? Let's uh, let's let him go. This does not make logical sense. <laughs> we need monetary funding. Yeah, we'll get the next one. If we disagree, what do we do? I don't know. <laughs> There's no mechanics for disagreement. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're at the end of the story. You succeeded here. You've got the bounty's secret. You have essentially captured them. It's up to you to decide what you want to do next. I can make a suggestion. Do it. Maybe they offer you a little bit of money to leave. That seems good. There you go. It's not two million Wulong, but maybe they offer you a little bit of money to go away. Oh, uh, look at this. 500 Wulong. That's a lot, Rockbot. 500 is not very much compared to two million <laughs> Cactus Jack. <laughs> He's talking, and then Cactus Jack starts putting the coins into, into Rockbot to have him be quiet and play music instead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you, you're just going to have to play us a ditty. During this time, Bond just uh, kind of comes up to and is sniffing around and then just kind of looks at uh, Rockbot with his, with his soul-searching eyes. Oh, yeah. Get Even him. though I know you don't have a soul, but... <laughs> yeah, I search guess for my soul. Which one of you doesn't have a soul? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I assume Rockbot doesn't actually have a soul, but you might still be not immune to feeling feeling sad when you when you look at my big old green eyes. What are you trying to do? Stop <laughs> looking at me that way. <laughs> <laughs> I have run out of treats. <laughs> <laughs> I start nudging your big form out the door. Yeah, I think the episode can end with like the ship departing and Rockbot is like just asking a ton of questions about why we just did it. What we did just didn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're just fighting over it. You get back on board the Dancing Queen with Bond pushing the robot up the gangplank and the other two the bounties, uh, get back on board their ship, which you can see is called the Soul Train. <laughs> nice. <laughs> As they close the gangplank and your ship flies away, we're going to do an epilogue. I don't normally do these, but because we're reproducing the feel of a TV show, we'll do a little epilogue here. We get to see as the listener, as the viewer, what's happening on the ship. And the man says, well, Josephine, I didn't think they were going to let us go, but I, I guess not all bounty hunters are bad people. And she says, yeah, but we don't have much money left. I hope they'll take us in. Oh, look, the, uh, the baby is uh, stirring. Look, Conant, look. And uh, he says, I, I, hold on, I got to get the ship up. And she says, Conant? Uh, Conant? And we see there's blood streaming down her face from her eyes. And Conant turns around and says, Josephine? And he sees this baby levitating above the black box. <laughs> we see his face as blood spatters all across it. And then he screams. See you, Space Cowboy. Thanks for listening to Cowboy Bebop. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The House of Bob. 
or by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash thehouseofbob. This show is possible due to all our patrons, who get one-shots, commentary, and other cool stuff. Art for this campaign is by Trevor. Audio production and music for this episode are by me, Mike. Thanks again for listening, and roll on. Thanks, uh, Christine and Schubert, for rescheduling. I really appreciate you guys for doing it. Yeah, no problem. Being flexible. I'm glad we found a time. Yeah. I am pretty flexible. I can do the splits. (laughs) You are actually pretty flexible. But call me when you can do the splits and parkour at the same time. So <laughs> At the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In between two things. <laughs> yeah. They call it uh, splarkour. <laughs> oh. This, now, this is a YouTube channel just ready and Spl- waiting to pop off. <laughs> splarkour. <laughs> that sounds like a new Nintendo franchise. <laughs> splarkour. <laughs> <laughs> This is Josh, and I'm playing Cactus Jack, the six sh- f- <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Well put. Sh- f- <laughs> Josh, you're not allowed to swear. Let me read this. <laughs> okay, Schubert, you go. Hold on. I need to <laughs> uh, But we're just going to play it by ear here. Yeah, we'll All be right. fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, we don't need to know everything. There's no penalty for screwing things up, except that people will get mad at us. <laughs> Whatever. All right. <laughs> they can eat my proverbial shorts. Whoa. Mine too. <laughs> and mine. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're a and fellowship my now. Axe. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I, don't, I don't have a voice yet. Hold on. Let me figure yeah, this I, out. I don't either. I practiced it earlier, and it was basically Corgo with a southern accent. So that might be the best we can get, <laughs> best I can get. You could do a John Wayne partner. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's why we need to do a Western game. (laughs) Yes, definitely. Why don't we just do that so everybody can see what it looks like? Okay. Uh, Well, let me look it up uh, what it is because I don't remember. Uh, Okay, here it is. (laughs) Oh, jeez. I got... (laughs) Good recovery. I know, it's going to be hard for me. You got to add, like, barking noises every time I cuss. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I'm definitely glad we didn't take that baby. We got, a, we got out of there just in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that definitely wasn't worth two million moolongs. <laughs> we never would have gotten it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could have shut the box back up and it would have all been okay. Well, we didn't even know we would need to do that, so it never would have happened. You don't want a, you don't want a baby around. <laughs> no. Nah. All right, guys, another couple weeks without food. Pass me them dog treats.